Police in Ichikawa have found the body of a young woman. The body was found buried in a bathtub filled with potting soil. She is believed to have been strangled. Her right eye was swollen and there were bruises on her arms and legs. The man cannot be identified. His whereabouts are unknown. Twenty-two-year-old Lindsay Ann Hawker was an ambitious recent graduate, taking a year off to teach English in the Chiba Prefecture of Tokyo before going off to grad school. By March 2007, she was happily settled in and made sure to send emails to her family and boyfriend back in England about how much fun she was having, how safe Japan felt. On March 21st, Lindsay was standing at the railway station after a long day of work when she was approached by a young man. She immediately felt weird vibes emanating from him. At first, the man claimed he was her student, but Lindsay had never seen him before. She recognized all her students. When probed, the man changed his story and asked if she could give him private English lessons. Getting more uncomfortable, she declined and jumped on her bike but he was determined. The strange man began chasing after her, running at an inhuman speed. Once they reached her flat, he asked for a glass of water. Even more creeped out that he caught up with her, Lindsay decided her roommates needed to see what he looked like. She let him inside, where he asked her again to be his tutor, this time offering money, an amount she couldn't refuse. Deciding that she could always use more pocket money and it wouldn't be too much work, Lindsay reluctantly agreed. Excited, the man pulled out a pen and paper and began quickly sketching out something. He revealed a portrait of Lindsay, along with his phone number, address, and name, Tatsuya Ichihashi. Three days later, they met at a coffee shop for their first lesson. It seemingly went well, but when it came to payment, Tatsuya realized he didn't have the money. He convinced Lindsay to take a cab with him to get the money from his house. Once they reached the house, she asked the cab driver to wait a few minutes. But when she didn't return after those few minutes, he drove off. Tatsuya Ichihashi was a 28-year-old loner who was a former track runner, obsessed with fitness, martial arts, and violent manga. At the time, he was unemployed and lived off an allowance of 100,000 yen a month from his parents. He had no prior criminal history and was in a long-term relationship with a girlfriend. Even Tatsuya's parents couldn't fathom what he would become. It was 7 p.m. on the 26th of March when Tatsuya received a knock on the door to his apartment. Lindsay's roommates were concerned that she hadn't returned home or shown up to work for two days and became suspicious of the enigmatic man who followed her home. Police were called at 2.30, but didn't arrive at Tatsuya's apartment until 7 p.m. Tatsuya grabbed his gym bag and barefoot deflected the police. An officer managed to grab onto the bag, but he was able to run, jumping down flights to reach the door. This would be the start of a chase that would last over two years. When the police entered the apartment, it was clear that a fight had broken out. Blood littered the floors and items were strewn around. On the balcony, a bathtub was filled to the brim with dirt and sand. Sticking out was Lindsay's hand. Later, police would learn that Tatsuya had physically and sexually assaulted Lindsay, knocking her out in a fit of fury. Her body was tied, her neck broke after he tried to prevent her from screaming. Scared and nervous after seeing what he had done, Tatsuya had made a few trips to the hardware store, purchasing dirt and sand, dragged the bathtub to the balcony, and poured the mixture in. A prolonged struggle was obvious. Lindsay's body was in bad shape with several bruising, and her head was shaved. Both Lindsay and Tatsuya were familiar with martial arts. Tatsuya was just more adept as a black belt in karate. 
Tatsuya's face became familiar among the citizens of Japan. Posters were placed in convenience stores, at railway stations, restaurants, anywhere with a large presence of people. Even life-sized cardboard standees that spoke to the public were made. In April, surveillance footage that showed Lindsay with Tatsuya mere hours before her death was broadcast on Japanese television. In 2008, police released new posters of rendered images depicting Tatsuya disguised as a woman. The picture he sketched of Lindsay was also released, in hopes someone would recognize the drawing style. Tetsuya was on the run, staying in love hotels, moving from district to district. Startled by the images of his face plastered all over Japan, Tetsuya began wearing face masks around, something that's not considered conspicuous in the springtime, as people wear it to minimize their spring allergy symptoms. He took on labor jobs that didn't require an ID and went by different names. With the money he made, he planned on getting plastic surgery to change his appearance. At some point, he even lived on a remote island in Oha, in a concrete World War II bunker where he ate wild fruit, fish, and snakes. Running out of ideas, Tetsuya decided he would partake in the Shikoku Ohenro pilgrimage, where he would visit all 88 temples. He had gotten the idea from what he read in a fictional novel that by partaking, it might be possible to have Lindsay come back to life. But he couldn't hide behind a face mask forever. Tatsuya was running out of money and decided to take fate in his own hands. Cutting open his bottom lip and quickly experiencing excruciating pain, he was unable to continue. To complete his DIY plastic surgery, later on he stitched his nose to make it appear thinner and even removed facial moles with a scalpel. To prevent suspicion of the scars, he kept his head down and wore his mask for a little longer. By 2009, Tetsuya had enough money to pay a surgeon to do the work properly. On November 4th, Tetsuya walked into a plastic surgery clinic in Nagoya where he applied to get his nose uplifted. But his mannerism caused suspicion, and the surgeon convinced a reluctant Tetsuya to take before and after photos. Little did he know, this would be the mistake that would lead him to getting caught. On November 10th, Tetsuya Ichihashi was captured at a ferry terminal in Osaka on his way to Okinawa. Police had been tipped off when a ticket officer recognized Tetsuya's face from the updated picture on the news. After 10 minutes of questioning, he sheepishly admitted, I am Ichihashi. He was detained and under Osaka police custody, and later moved back to Chiba for his trial. In a raid of the employee dormitory he resided in, Police found a number of mirrors, an English dictionary, and a partially completed application form for a passport under the name of Kosuka Inui. Police speculated that this was one of his many aliases, which was later confirmed in the book Tatsuya wrote about his time on the run. In December of 2009, Tatsuya was charged with abandoning Lindsay Hawker's lifeless body, and later with rape and murder. Before his trial in January of 2011, Tatsuya published a book confessing to his crimes, describing how he spent his years on the run and his experience performing plastic surgery on himself. At his trial in July 2011, face to face with the devastated Hawker family, Tatsuya admitted to the horrific actions he did. With teary eyes, he insisted that he didn't intend to kill Lindsay, but this wasn't enough for the judges. Bill Hawker, Lindsay's father, pleaded with the court to give Tatsuya the full extent of the law. They had spent their life savings and pension funds on the trips back and forth to Japan and on advertisements to find justice for their daughter. Japan does have a death penalty, reserved for the worst serial killers, which is seldom enacted. But due to Tatsuya's age, the judge ruled he was young enough to be rehabilitated, giving him life imprisonment.
Hit with guilt, Tatsuya tried to change his appearance, but his crimes will always follow him, no matter what his face looks like under the mask he wears. Craving more twisted stories? Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button, if you dare.